Okay, we're at High Wire Gallery, and I am speaking with Joshua Gabriel, who is the painter who has done the other half of this room here. And we're just going to talk with Joshua about his about his work. Uh, now, give us some insight, would you please, Joshua, about what you do? That's what you do, what you think about, what your work is about. Uh, it looks like there's a lot of popular images in it, uh, a lot of a lot of a lot of painterly. Uh, you know what? I mean, I guess, you know, uh, always done art, you know, my mother being an artist, and uh, kept that going my whole life, and I got into this, this line work style, I guess, uh, maybe when I was like in my early 20s, and uh, most of it is like drawn spontaneously, kind of automatic drawing. I will use references for, for something like a face. Mm -hmm. or, or sometimes I, I might look at uh, some leaves or something like that, or a cat. And then a lot of the line work is just sort of drawn spontaneously. So mm -hmm. I just started doing that. It was influenced by Keith Haring's show that I saw a lot, and this, this fast way that he would draw. Right. And you just oh, yeah. kind of go up and you just start going. It's I, like you're freestyling. I heard it said about Keith Haring that he used to draw between the drum beats. Which right. I thought was an interesting yeah. way of saying that. Yeah, interesting. Uh, yeah. So, are you a uh, are, are you a trained artist? Is that what you? Uh, sure. I mean, I went to I went to art college here in Philadelphia. I uh, uh -huh. grew up in Philly. I went to Tyler School of Art, and uh, actually majored in graphic design. Graphic and, design. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I work off and on as a graphic designer, but actually, graphic design led me back to wanting to do fine art. Yeah. yeah. Uh, where you have complete artistic freedom, do whatever you, you want. Complete control. You don't have some art director looking over your shoulder and telling you to <laughs> thicken the line. For sure. Yeah. And that's commercial and you're doing, you're, you're serving someone else's needs. Exactly. Somebody else's ideas. Right. I can really see there's a lot of painterly activity going on in the background of this painting. Yeah. This, this is a style that kind of came about maybe a couple of years ago. I did a uh, I live in Brooklyn now, and I did this large outdoor mural, mm -hmm. and this was done in the same style of that mural, where I start with uh, some flat colors, it's like a flat green that covers the whole thing, and I layer it uh, with some spray paint, you can see, mm -hmm. and then there's a layer of, of splatters, and yeah, so it just looks like a big abstract piece at first, and then I go in with this sort of tight line. It's a paint marker, mm -hmm. some kind of drawing with paint. So it's a paint marker. So it's this paint is, marker. Inks or acrylic? Um, it's uh, it's I guess it would be similar to acrylic uh, paint, but it's in a marker, so mm -hmm. it suits the way I draw. I'm more drawing than painting when, mm -hmm. it, when it comes to things like this. And uh, I can flow longer with mm -hmm. the paint brush you got. So what's what's the title like of, of this piece? What's the, the title? The, the title, yeah. I just came up with it the other day when we were hanging it. So I think it's Autumn Spirits. So this one was definitely influenced by just the colors of autumn. I did it last autumn as the leaves, you know, they start green and they, they sort of turn to fire, they turn to yellow or red. Oh yeah. And, and yeah. gold before they turn brown and fall off. So well, I yeah. kind of got obsessed with autumn the past few years and I take millions of photographs of the leaves and everything and sometimes take leaves and uh, you know take them home and kind of just look at them for a while. Mm -hmm. they have, you could never come up with how amazing the, the colors and, and designs are you know, just in nature. So that influenced the, uh, the color palette for this. And I guess the subject matter as well. Mm -hmm. This is a nice passage here. Thanks. I like that. Let's move to the next work. Uh, now these are all sort of these are all drawn, so there's sort of an illustration quality here too. You think this yeah. one, this one's called Panhandle Park? I, yeah, I did this. I was living in San Francisco, and uh, there's a park there uh, in this area called the Panhandle. Mm -hmm. uh, that I live close to, so I just tons of just you go to the park and start drawing. You know, this was just done, you know, mm -hmm. in a sketchbook, just with a marker. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, maybe I had uh, some magazines with me there, so I kind of maybe take a face from here and a face from there, and then just 
freestyle draw whatever whatever little comes out of my hand. A little bit of appropriation here? Maybe appropriation, appropriation of images? Yeah, right. uh, I mean, I, I look at, at photo references for faces a lot. Mm -hmm. So, but they usually come out pretty different. Mm -hmm. Well, not appropriation per se, like, like stealing any kind of image. You know, from something else. I mean, you could say you could say stealing if you want. I mean, yeah. I'm looking I'm looking at a face and I'm drawing it. Oh, I see. Uh -huh. So th this piece here is called Twisted. This was a series of self portraits, also from when I was living on the West Coast, and uh, we took these. My wife took these photographs of me, and. Uh, I made them just a black and white silhouette, mm -hmm. and then I went in and drew inside the shape of my silhouette. So That's this nice. was this was on the water, like in Oakland, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, this just started as a little drawing, and I put it onto a silk screen, larger. So this is a mixture of silk screen with some paint, so you know some spray paint. You mm -hmm. can see that. What is spray paint and what is yeah, that splatters. Yeah, that S shape there, yeah. Yeah, and then I just uh, silk screen, you know, the, the image in this, in this dark blue. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot of different versions of this. Because once you get it on the silk screen, you can do it in different colors and mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. sizes. There, there's a bunch of them. But once you have this the one I particularly like, yeah. uh, thought turned out well. Yeah, it's nice. I like the line work in it. Thank you. So you have a very confident uh, sense of, uh, of drawing. This, this one here is called Lion. Yeah. Go back up on this a little so we can see the whole thing. Yeah, so then some of these over here utilize the computer. Um, so it starts with a drawing. Mm -hmm. This would be a drawing that's maybe like this big. Oh, and yeah, a mixture of freestyled elements and looking at references. Is this on this? This is on this, vinyl. The, this is a, a digital is print it? called a C print. A C print. Okay. Yeah. So take the drawing, scan it into the computer, and this is colored in the computer, and layered in the computer. So then to get it back out into the, the physical world, mm -hmm. you know, just get a digital print. Got to print it out. Yeah. So yeah, and then you can print it out whatever size you want. So I printed it out, you know, larger than the original drawing ones. But well, it still keeps that same line. Yeah, it's always it's always the line. It's mm -hmm. like sometimes it's use the computer, sometimes it's more painterly, like the first piece, but it, it's always mm -hmm. based around the, the line, sure. Okay. Gemini twins? Yeah, this was a drawing I did for uh, I guess a CD of my music. Mm -hmm. I make music, so I had this uh, CD. So you have a you, you you have a CD of your music out. Is it available? Can yeah, you? I've 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 always done music with the art, so I, I've got tons of, of CDs. Well, do you and have a do you have a website you want to reference? Sure, it's joshuagabriel.com, okay. and uh, yeah, there's music and art on there. There's a lot of work online on uh -huh. sites like Bandcamp, or you can link to it from my site. Um, this album is called Book of Gemini. So, uh, yeah, this was just a, this is the original drawing that this print is from. So I did this drawing and uh, I do like to do faces a lot. And so I did these faces and uh, for years I've also had this this work where I, where I draw on people's faces and bodies. Mm -hmm. So this sort of utilized that uh, aspect. And uh, again, took it into the computer and colored it. Which is sort of, you know, mixing the graphic design techniques with mm -hmm. the fine art techniques. Mm -hmm. So you feel that computer technology has really advanced the, uh, the arts? Is that an important uh, so thing? It's just going? another tool, just mm -hmm. another medium, like mm -hmm. printmaking or sculpture or lithography. It's just another tool. You learn how to use these programs, mm -hmm. Photoshop, 
in design, things like that. So it, mm -hmm. it's natural to start. It starts creeping into your fine art. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's, well, how, that's how pieces yeah. like this sort of came about. But yeah, the, the computer can do things your hand can't do. Your hand can do things that the computer can't do. I like to mix them. Um, you can draw right into the computer using a, mm -hmm. a tablet, a Wacom yeah. uh, yeah. jam. But uh, I never got used to that. It's kind of like you're drawing on ice. It has a completely different yeah. feel. Yeah. I like the feel of drawing on paper. Yeah, I've tried to do that as well too. I can't, I can't do it. It's kind of like it's, it's separ it separates, separates the actual drawing from the feeling of... Yeah, you, it, you lose yeah. the actual tactile feel of it. And you can get used to it and then it's like, yeah, to me it feels like you're just drawing on ice or something. It's just, it's a little too smooth. I but it's certainly harder mm -hmm. than actual drawing. I understand entirely what you're saying. It's like, yeah, well, it's, it's drawing over here so you can see it over there. Yeah, uh, there's yeah. that aspect. It's weird too. It, yeah. It's like it doesn't work with your mind. You're drawing over here and it's happening over here. Now th this one here is called Goddess? Yeah. So, yeah, this is another, you know, face piece. Um, look at a lot of fashion magazines, will, a lot of times are the best photographs. So I'll use that a lot uh, mm -hmm. as a reference when I'm drawing the face. But I change it so in the end you, you, couldn't, you couldn't tell that it's the same face. Mm -hmm. Oh no, no, uh, yeah, I, I'm I just using it, it as more I'm, of a guide. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And, uh, so this is another one that, that started out as drawing, like this. This, this is an actual original drawing. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a drawing for this one. Again, put into the computer, um, put onto a silk screen. Mm -hmm. So then this was silk screened, and then I went in and hand painted the silk screen. Very nice, very, even, very evenly colored. It's got some really strong, that, that red reacts against that gold very well. Yeah, yeah, I, I like the bright colors. Mm -hmm. Now this one over here is called the Cosmic Sneaker. Yeah. Oh, you can see that. Uh, that's, a, that's pretty awesome. Thanks. So is this a... That's, I mean, that, that's like a real fun, quick one. Mm -hmm. Just, just like, just sit down and just like draw the sneaker, but like in my weird style. And then uh, this was colored in the computer, mm -hmm. and just like, just a real quick one. But mm -hmm. you print it out large, it just uh, oh, it's such a work, it's worked out. Yeah, it's more dramatic. It really, I, I mean, this the way you have these greens uh, enabled by other greens, and these blues, these shading in from the edges. That's a really nice effect. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, that's like, you can do that by hand as well. You can do that a lot quicker with the computer. So, mm -hmm. and the computer is good at giving you flat, bright things. Mm-hmm. So that, that worked for this. And very even, e even too. Yeah. It's like your hand, you gotta really, you gotta really discipline your hand in order, in order to make yeah, that you kind can of mark. You can copy that, that flatness and that tightness with your hand. Certainly, mm -hmm. but with the computer, it takes one second. You just say, green. Green, and there, and there. <laughs> there it is. The magic of technology, yeah. it is green. Now this one here has uh, it's the same high heels. You know, same, yeah, the same series. Yeah. Uh, same kind of thing, just like real quick and fun. Just mm -hmm. mostly freestyling. You know, you just put those heels in there and the stuff around is just like the amorphous kind of uh, forms that are that I'm always making. That's kind of like, it reminds me of Peter Max in a way, like uh, 19, 1960s psychedelia. That's what, that's what Richard said last night. Yeah, it definitely has a Peter Max feel, for sure. Now this one here is the same. It's that one. It's yeah. another version of that one. And uh, once you have it on that silk screen again, you can, you can play with the color combinations. So this is like a real simple graphic, black, white, and red. It's always a very effective nice, combo. Very nice. very nice, I like your style. Thank you. So get a little closer in on this. Yeah, 
just I did, I did that one first, and then I was like, what would happen if she had gold skin? Mm -hmm. and, you know, so just, yeah, playing with it. Okay, we're in the back room of the gallery now, and uh, we're going to take a look at some of your, uh, your smaller pieces here. Yes. Now, this is uh, called Ziggy, okay, and I'm assuming that's re related to David Bowie. Yeah, yeah. This, this is a David Bowie uh, portrait. Um, that's a picture that's on the back of his album, Space Oddity. Space Oddity. Not the original mm -hmm. cover, if you're like some kind of Bowie geek uh, like I am, but it's uh, the, <laughs> yeah. they reissued it later when he looked like this and he was more famous. Mm -hmm. He actually didn't look like that when that album came out. Yeah. Anyway, it's a great photograph, so I did a painting of it. Uh, a painting slash drawing, I guess you could say. And so, yeah, this, this utilizes uh, maybe more of the painterly technique of that first green piece where there's paint on here, there's some spray paint, there's some splatters, there's some like letting some more watercolor type of stuff go on mm -hmm. and then drawing on top of that. Now, what is, the, what is this on? Is this on wood or? Canvas? Or? That's that's canvas. It is canvas. Yeah, right? and then just framed. And this piece over here. That's the sneaky sleeper. Was what I was calling my lady uh, for a while. Um, kind of be doing something, and then you turn around, boom, she'd be asleep. <laughs> and so I'd always take these pictures of her, you know, just sleeping with our cat right there. So I just use nice. that. Um, to do a, a small, intimate kind of uh, personal piece. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's beautiful. I like the color work in it. I like the drawing of it. It's very, it is, it's very intimate, very nice. This is from that series of uh, the, the self-portrait silhouettes uh -huh. um, that we looked at one before called Twisted. This one's called The Bird. And yeah, so it's just my silhouette filled with my drawings as maybe a different way to do a self-portrait with, you know, not drawing my, my features and stuff. It's more like my shape is filled with my drawings. Okay, we had a phone call there. <laughs> so uh, let's, let's continue with this. This is a, a self-portrait uh, called the bird. Actually, you see the bird right here. Yes. So. Yeah, so I guess I was... Maybe I was saying that uh, it was kind of a different way to do a self-portrait and instead of drawing my facial features and stuff, it's just my shape filled with my drawings. Mm-hmm. So you are your art. What yeah, is your take? Sure. You're, you are your art. Okay. Now, um, here we have Dylan illuminated, so... Yeah, like the Bowie one, just, you know, it's fun to, to draw your favorite musical artist sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I'm a big Bowie Dylan person. And uh, this is from a photograph that was in some Dylan book I had, this great photograph. And I guess, I guess with both the Dylan and the, and the Ziggy, it's about like some kind of like magic moment that's happening when you're, like when he's playing. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're, you're showing with lines things that are maybe invisible, like these right. sort of energy coming out of his harmonica or his uh, guitar. Maybe the energy from the idea of like maybe the energy from like the universe kind of kind of going in goes and through out. him. He's like lit up with the spirit and then it comes out of the microphone, harmonica and guitar. Mm-hmm. There's a, and you may not be able to see this in the video, but there is a, a definite sort of sparkly effect. Uh, I'd say like almost a, a gloss coming off of the work itself. If we can, yeah, get, I, I think that's you know, you know some of the white paint does that, and I use a metallic gold marker a lot. Mm -hmm. And so when that hits certain lights, it shines. And that's one reason I, I like to use the gold. Okay, now we have this one here, which is another self-portrait. Yeah, this was the first one that started that series. Hmm. A variation on a theme here. Yeah, but this one isn't a print or digital. This is all hand. This is hand drawn. Yeah, it's all painted. hand drawn and painted, yes. Yeah. It's very nice. Thank you. 
So we have a bigger one here. We all, we're, we're, let's see. Now, I guess maybe you have to get back this far from it to get a good look at it. And what is the title of that one? Red Handed. Red Handed? Oh. Yeah, he's talking about the, you know, this red hand, this sort of this necklace of like heads on this, this woman. This is, there's also heads, earrings. These have a somewhat tribal feeling to them yeah, as well. Sure. I think I, I, I see some sort of, uh, um, well, looking for the right word, but the type of drawing is almost like a tattoo in a way. Yes, yeah. A lot of people make that connection with the work. And uh, definitely when it, it's like I'm drawing on the skin, I'm drawing on the clothes with mm -hmm. this pattern, it, it has a tribal quality and, and it's probably influenced by ancient art mm -hmm. like that, you know, that I love. But sort of subconscious, because this is really, uh, I mean, between mixing the tribal with the, with the graffiti style and the, and the colors and the spray paint, there's definitely a, uh, you know, a 1980s to present sort of uh, thought process going on here. Sure. Yeah, I, I love ancient work, but then I, it kind of comes through today mm -hmm. and techniques of recent years. Well, it's always been my contention that a lot of modern art is a mixture of uh, previous styles that have uh, yeah. been incorporated into the way people think. This one doesn't have good lighting. That's okay, it picks it up. Uh, this one is called Child of the Moon. That's, uh, that's a line from a Rolling Stone song, or it's the title. I like a lot of uh, old music mm -hmm. and new music. And uh, this was a pretty much spontaneous. Wasn't really planned out. Just kind of came about. And sort of afterwards, the title will, will make sense to me. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll see what it's about. But I, I, I think with a lot of the stuff, it's like the, there's not a big plan beforehand of what I'm, I'm trying to make. It's more like I'm just drawing and painting. Mm -hmm. And whatever is in me is going to come out. Maybe afterwards I can speculate about what it's about. Well, that's usually what happens. Sometimes, like Salvador Dali would say, it's not important for anybody to know what he says. It's not even important for him to know what he says. Yeah. So I have always, I've always taken that statement to heart. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I love him and and all so, the things he says, the way he says it. <laughs> well, I like it that he throws cats into the pool because he thinks they should fly. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's He's a fun guy for sure. Uh, this was, yeah, this is more of a, a portrait. Like a uh, little girl. Mm hmm Girl on red. Yeah, this is nice. This is this is also very intri intimate because of the well. Because look at the attitude of her. Looks like she looks like she's really staring you down. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It it becomes maybe about her side, her inner. Mind. Well, maybe your interpretation of what she's thinking too, because there's a lot. Right, or <clears throat> there's a lot going on. Or in you this. can't help but project. It's really you. You're projecting your own mm -hmm. inner mind, like onto your subjects. You know whether you know you're doing that or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I think of that one as more painterly. You know, that's all hand done. Mm-hmm. Has a, yeah, it has more of a traditional aspect to it. Yeah. So yeah, sometimes it's yeah. fun to just do that. I, I let the brush strokes show in that one. Mm -hmm. Like to mix the loose and the tight. Yeah. Yeah. Well that's all that's all part of adapting the language of contemporary art into uh, 
you know, into one piece. Sure. Because you, well, like we were saying about the other one, you have the the linear versus the graffiti versus the, you know, versus the tribal. It's yeah. all of that stuff all combines together to create yeah. a new work of art. Yeah. So that's pretty interesting. Is yeah. this the is this the last piece in the show? This is the last piece. Yes. Okay. Now, um, before we close shop here, do you uh, have uh, something that you would like to say about your artwork that I might have missed or we didn't approach? I mean, I think going piece by piece really kind of covers it, my, my process and the thought process. Okay. I don't, I don't have a big, like, summation of, of me. <laughs> huh. You're having fun. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just making art is what I do. And uh, it's just a journey. It's more like just drawing and then seeing what comes out. Yeah. It's my work is really about uh, spontaneity. Yeah. And having fun, like we all do, like we all say, having fun. Sure. Okay. Joshua, thank you. Thank you.